Hey, fellow gardeners. Are you helping at the community garden? Have you seen the community garden back here? Well, I'm a, I'm a gardener and I'm happy that Jesus is going to tell us about gardening in our gospel today for the 28th Wednesday of Ordinary Time, October 16th. And here's your gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yo, know, I love this thing about the gardening. You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Yeah. I, you know what, though? Um, I have never seen anybody put in the offering basket mint and rue and every other garden herb. I'm still waiting. I'm waiting. You know, what about that children's collection? I'd like to see some mint and herbs and rue. I had to look up rue. Uh, apparently it's a noxious um, herb that is not uh, healthy. So they've kind of gotten rid of that for cooking. Probably don't throw some of that in the offertory basket. But uh, Jesus says, woe to you Pharisees. What is he doing? Is he just mean, mean to the Pharisees? Calling them out, trying to embarrass them, chastising them. Oh, he's, woe means wake up, wake up. Jesus loves the Pharisees. I don't know if you know this, but he's, he's kind of hard on the Pharisees throughout the Gospels. But it's because he actually thinks these guys are going to be the great Christians of the future. Yeah? He, these are people who are very devout Jews. They love God. They love religion. They go out of their way to practice religion when the rest of the folks are kind of like, well, we want the easy religion. We want the easy way. And the Pharisees were really popular with the people at the time of Jesus. There's different groups of leadership. Sadducees, you have a priestly class. You have uh, these monks called Essenes at the time. And then you have the Pharisees. And they were known uh, to be the popular preachers at the time. And they put their money where their mouth was. They did. They did. They lived the, the religion in, in a very intense way. They weren't perfect. They were political. They were messy. They had their issues. They sometimes delighted too much in this, um, this whole per, um, public perception and popularity. But there was mostly a lot of good, um, faithful, devout Jews who loved God and were trying to be the best religious people that they could be and be a good example to others. So Jesus comes along, he says, these are great people and they're great, you know, um, devotees of God. So he wants to, to have them wake up and see like, okay, don't misdirect all this religious stuff. Here's some of the places where you're going wrong. And let's get that, let's get that right. Let's get that on ship. And maybe they'll end up following Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit, living a whole different kind of life, of uh, religious life, a life defined by love rather than, you know, uh, worries about obedience to all the particulars of, um, of the Judaic law of the time, the way that they practiced it, the Pharisees. Okay, so Pharisees, not really bad guys, just uh, misdirected and... Um, misguided with the way that they were doing religion. So here's some of the ways Jesus is saying, hey, wake up. You want to be great um, religious people? You want to be holy? Well, here's, uh, here's a few points of advice. Uh, you pay all these tithes of the mint and the rue and the every garden herb, 
but you don't attend to the judgment of God and uh, to love for God. Be generous. Be generous. Really good religion is generous. It's generous. Be generous with yourself, with God, and with others. But the focus is for love. No, to love God and love your neighbor. Jesus is always pointing them back to this. Be generous. You're promoting generosity, but you're getting obsessed with the way that that has to look with um, these particular garden herbs and um, farm animals. Now, there were rules about all of this stuff, and they were demonstrations of people's care that they really watched that and did it you know as right as they can but Jesus is saying it's a it's, it's about the spiritual principle be generous in your love for God and others woe to you Pharisees you love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces and you know sometimes we get into the place where we say well I'm I'm giving a lot to be a religious person and um, people should watch my example the world needs examples. The church needs examples. And um, I want to step forward as a leader and give a good example. I love that. As a priest in a parish, I love it when people have that kind of confidence to say, you know, I'm not perfect, but I've worked hard at this and I think I, got, I get some of it. And I want to lead other people. I want to teach a class. I want to lead a prayer group. I want to... Um, you know, to help other people with the liturgy, the uh, catechese, whatever it is, you know, stepping forward and saying with my, you know, with your family, everything and saying, I, you know, I, I'm confident in Christ that I can be an example to others. Now, don't get filled with, oh, I'm, you know, over impressed with yourself. Stay humble and um, continue to uh, to give of yourself. And not to look to receive. Oh, you know, you start to feel sorry for yourself. I do this. Oh, but the people don't receive it. Oh, but the people don't care. Oh, but I'm, you know, I'm failing. And I thought I set out to be so good. And then I'm like, don't matter. Don't matter. He says, be humble. Enjoy the service that you're giving. Enjoy being, you know, following God and being generous with yourself and, and an example. Woe to you, Pharisees. Woe to you. You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Whoa, um, you know, at the time of Jesus, you want to protect your um, ritual purity. So there were all these rules around how you can stay in the presence of God if you're not soiled by all these things that are that are too base, too too earthly, too stuck down, you know. And so there was like certain animals that are gross and are stuck in the mud. I don't eat those because it'll just make you stuck in the mud. Um, here's a rule about death. Don't touch people who are dead. Don't uh, get too close and don't, don't, don't touch a tomb. Touch it because it's, it's dragging you down. It's about death and you're meant to live and you're meant to, to rise and to kind of keep your life toward heaven, keep your eyes on heaven. Those are pretty good things, but, um, Jesus is saying, Hey, look, so long as you guys are living for yourselves, um, woe to you Pharisees. Because you think you're, you're trying to make everybody pure, but that selfishness, that obsession, that, that being hard on everybody, that, that, that lack of love and mercy, in fact, is spoiling things. That's base. That's low. And if you want to be heavenly, we got to look up. We got to look to mercy. We got to do things that are unexpectedly divine. To err is human, to forgive is divine. Ah, no? So forgive, to give peace to offer um, ourselves in service rather than to be served. And one of the scholars comes, teacher, by saying this, woe to you also, you impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do, do not lift one finger to touch them. So these other folks are caught in the crosshairs. Well, what about us, Jesus? We're the ones who are giving the rules, defining the rules. And the Pharisees are the ones who are trying really hard to follow them. But we're trying to do, we're trying to give them a roadmap for how to live um, a holy life and how to keep other people holy. And Jesus says, you know what? You're loading up all these burdens on people and um, you got to help them. You got to help them. You got to lift those things. And Jesus doesn't say the rules are bad themselves. He just says, help people and serve. And no, don't just call people out. Don't judge. Don't go looking around and saying, oh, you're doing it. You're not doing it. 
I need to go correct that person, but serve. Serve with your, with your, um, your gift of your wisdom and your knowledge and uh, all this research you're doing, he's telling the scribes. All right. Well, God bless you. There's some, a few pointers from Jesus on how to live an authentic religious life focused on love and generosity and humility and service. May God bless you with the same. May he bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you peace all the days of your life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Francis Cabrini, pray for us.